Remember back in the summer, Valve had changed a lot of the policies on their content for Steam, talking about how as long as the games weren't illegal or blatantly trolling, they were not going to be as harsh when it came to monitoring games, and in their own words, they were not going to be the taste police. They were not going to taste policed games, they were just going to go with the flow and try to allow something on the platform if it was allowed when it came to new games and games attempting to, you know, enter their platform. And well, yesterday they actually changed those policies yet again, but this time they didn't do it publicly. They probably expected this to go under the radar just for it to be changed to cover their asses in case the time came and they needed it to be more in their favor and this is such a low in terms of policy changes they didn't announce the changes and they haven't even followed the policy changes that they changed back in the summer i believe it was in august or september I mean, they've been restricting and banning games left and right recently, and obviously because they're being the taste police, their employees are taste policing like they said that they didn't want to do. And there's been games recently, Senran Kangura, that actually recently released on the platform because it makes the money, when they've been banning games for less recently, according to their changes last year, should have been allowed on the platform because they weren't games that were breaking laws or overly suggestive. To me, these under-the-radar changes really seem to help to protect the rogue employees that have been overseeing what gets on the platform and what doesn't. It seems to me, at least, that they're trying to have a way to protect the employees by saying, well, if something doesn't get on the platform, it's because we don't want it on the platform, because we decide what is legally gray and what isn't. And with how much heat they've been taking recently because of these issues, I'm not saying that it's a foolish idea. I mean, it does save their hides from something going wrong, I'm just not saying that it's completely right for them to do either. They should be announcing these changes, not trying to let them fly under the radar so nobody knows about it until they can actually use it to their advantage. I'm going to link an article from One Angry Gamer that goes into a lot of detail um, and lists also a ton of the games that have been banned from Steam since September. But Steve has said that they will ban games based on their own discretion and if they see those games as being in a legally gray area. So one of their new statements is, regardless of what a developer's intentions with are with their product, we will not distribute content that appears in our judgment to trade the prurient representation or exploitation of minors. While every product submitted is unique, if your product features this representation, even in a subtle way that could be defined as a gray area, what they call a gray area, it will be rejected by Steam. We are not interested in working with these partners that dance around the edges of what's legal and what isn't. For instance, setting your game in a high school but declaring your characters are of legal age would fall into the category and be banned. But what they actually said back in the summer when the content policies were changed was, we've decided that the right approach is to allow everything onto the Steam store, except for the things that we decide are illegal or straight up trolling. Taking this approach allows us to focus less on trying to police what should be on Steam and more on building those tools to give people control over what kinds of content they see. And they also did um, at that time uh, release the adult filtering tools, you know, the better filtering tools to kind of filter out for the younger audiences and the adult audiences to see what kind of content you preferred. Which they did originally say, except for things that we decide are legal, but they said it with the following words, trying to convince us that they were being very picky on what would actually receive a ban, which in a lot of cases now, looking at it right around six months in the future, uh, looks like a blatant lie because it's actually gotten worse than it was. A lot of more games are being banned on Steam recently that weren't wouldn't actually previously be banned because they were less policing before they added in the adult filters. And right now on their rules and guidelines, there are hundreds of large selling games that are actively on their platform that violate their own new guidelines. But will they remove them from their platform? Probably not, because these games consist of things like uh, Mortal Kombat, The Witcher, GTA V, and a ton more. I, you guys know the games that I'm talking about, which are some of the top selling games on their platform. It's business and what sells stays and what doesn't goes. That's the model that they're going for now, is not trying to appeal to audiences to go on their platform and developers to be on their platform. They just want on their platform what will sell and they don't want on their platform what isn't going to sell.
Right now, Steam is a mess looking at it from a consumer of many, many years. I own many games on Steam, but I recently have been purchasing more from alternate sites such as GOG that actually has picked up games that Steam has been banning, which GOG used to not actually do. But the thing with GOG is that they are very, they are very clear on their policies. They are very clear on what they allow and what they don't allow. And I I love that about GOG. They are very 100% transparent to their audiences, to their consumers, and also their developers on what can and can't be on their platform. And I can't even imagine how poorly developers feel about the whole Steam situation right now, because this just means that they're okay with their employees not following the guidelines, and they're okay with their employees judging what can and can't enter the platform because of their personal preferences and the things that they find tasteful and distasteful. And that's not how a company of this size or any size really should work. Games should be ran through maybe two or three different employees, not just one, and that's what's happening right now. Is it's, it's being ran through mainly from what we've read, one single employee, well there's a couple of different employees that do the job, but when games hit the table, it's only looked at by one employee, and that's definitely not how it should be. Because what happens if a game with no sexual content or suggested themes gets banned from the platform with no appeal? And we've seen that happen too in the past few months. It's an awful situation of what's going on with Steam right now, and it makes me not want to purchase from Steam. Unfortunately, there's a lot of games recently that are being put on the market for PC that are only sold on Steam because of exclusive deals, and I hope that soon enough people really start to realize that this is a problem and do purchase games that are available on other websites or through uh, individual websites. I hope that people do start to purchase that way. That is what I have done. If there is an option besides Steam, I do purchase it off, off of whatever the other option besides Steam is, but... I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It's been a very hot topic with me lately, talking about Steam and what they've done recently because personally, it really, really bothers me. I am someone that looks at things not only from a consumer's point of view, but of a developer's point of view and the business point of view. And I just think that it is awful with the, the situation that is going on right now and no one deserves this. People that put their time and work and effort into creating a game do not deserve to to be just kind of ditched like this from the platform that they're trying to get their game on. They just wipe it away and say, you know what, you're banned, no appeal, see you later. It's an awful situation, but let me know your thoughts on the whole situation and them quietly, quietly changing the terms of service and the policies. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you guys again really soon. Hey there, thank you so much for sticking around until the end of the video. You should click that subscribe button and there are plenty of ways to show support to the channel such as following me on Twitter, joining the Dark Titans Discord server, or even chipping in on Patreon and becoming a Dark Titan yourself. I'll see you all in the next video.